Hello, welcome back to the Cognitive Whiteboard. My name's Luke and today we're filming the second video uh, around a series on fascist modeling. This video we're going to focus in on how we do the data analysis uh, behind a fascist model. It's arguably one of the most difficult parts of the workflow and so it's a place to take your time and get it right. Uh, really, before we get into any of the, the, uh, the analysis of this, we should have had the conversation with the stratigrapher, the, the geophysicist, and all of the rest of the geologists in your region to understand what your depositional environment is likely to be uh, in your particular area, and make sure that you understand how the best practices um, reflect that kind of depositional system. And the job that we're going to do as modelers is going to be to implement that theory in three-dimensional space. A common starting point is to look at the vertical proportions that we see in the wells. Uh, and this isn't an easy task to do by any means. It's not easy uh, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we're sampling a discrete property, and we're sampling it usually with a handful of wells, uh, and so it's quite difficult to see a lot of character in that. Uh, we've essentially thrown away a lot of information when we made the choice of binning a bunch of rock types together into a particular fascist class. Uh, so it's important that we take that observational data, tie it back into the depositional concept, and produce a conceptual vertical curve uh, that mirrors what you're trying to invoke inside the model. Now, I personally am not smart enough to get the right curve uh, for a full field model in one go. Quite frankly, I don't know what the right vertical proportion curve would be for that model there in that grid. Uh, because it varies across space. Essentially over here it's 100% of the orange fascies and over here there's none of it. So what's the right vertical proportion curve? Well that, that really depends upon the grid structure as well as the depositional model. So I find a much simpler routine is to actually generate more than one vertical curve across my model. I do this manually uh, and then draw some polylines and use a little bit of mathematics to blend them together and construct a, a combined vertical proportion uh, concept, essentially a three-dimensional model now, uh, that blends together both my map-based theory and my vertical proportion curves. It's a, a little bit more work, but I find it gives me a lot more control. And then, of course, it's very important that we see if we can't drive something out of the seismic to give us insight into the, uh, into the reservoirs. When we do so, uh, just, of course, be aware of the vertical resolution that you get from seismic. Uh, there may be a lot of tuning effects. This reservoir is thinning off to the left here, so I would be quite skeptical about what I'm seeing here. And, of course, the seismic wavelet may be several, um, several times thicker than the, the reservoir target. So it's important to understand is this an average type effect over the whole reservoir? Uh, is it a particular stratigraphic zone? Uh, because any seismic image sees not only the target of interest, but also the, the, um, the rock adjacent to that. Um, and of course, the, set, the seismic interpreter, the geophysicist, is going to be seeing um, the same rocks bend in a different way. They're going to be bidding it by acoustic properties, and the sedimentologist might be bidding it by, by uh, other methods. So it's quite important, referring back to the first video, that we have that clear and calm conversation uh, so that we can relate these properties uh, to the fascies that we've observed in the wells and bring it all together. And finally, uh, that point of bringing it together, most tools, when we come to execute the fascist modeling routines, allow you to blend more than one trend uh, into essentially a single prior uh, that will go into the geostatistical routine. Most of the time, uh, commercial software will give you essentially slider bars um, but of, of these various kinds of properties, which you're essentially saying, I love or I hate this property, it works or it doesn't work. Um, I'm going to try to blend this together. Arguably, maybe because that's quite easy to control mathematically um, in an uncertainty routine at the end. I'm not a big fan of this because I don't get to see uh, that outcome in three-dimensional space uh, before it goes into the modeling routine. So again, it's relatively simple mathematics, uh, a couple of scripts, and you can end up combining these together yourself and have a nice three-dimensional um, concept that you get to QC yourself before it goes into the modeling routine. I hope this is all helpful. Uh, we'll use this kind of concepts in the next video and ta start talking about executing specific routines.